morning to everyone. I am Dr. Kumar, Assistant Professor in Oral Medicine and Radiology Department, Vinayaga Mission, Sankaracharya Dental College. Today, I am going to take a class about oral pigmented lesions. First, before we are going to the topics, we should know about the some of the basics. First, basic structure of the skin and oral mucosa. Skin covers all over the body. Oral mucosa covers the oral cavity. In the structure of the skin, uh, there is a three layers. The superficial layer is called epidermis, and middle layer is called dermis, and before that, third layer is called subcutaneous fat. The same thing in the oral epithelium. First, superficial layer is called epithelium, then basement membrane, then connective tissue. These are the three layers in the epithelium, the skin and epithelium. Introduction. The color of the skin is one of the girl's major concerns. This area naturally is of great interest to the cosmetic chemists. Pigments are the color substances, some of which are normal constituents of the cells, whereas others are abnormal and collect in cells only after under spe special circumstances. The pigmentation is divided into two main categories. One is endogenous pigmentation, second one is exogenous pigmentation. So, what are all the endogenous pigmentation? The endogenous pigmentation are synthesized within the body. This is a normal physiological process. That endogenous pigmentation is divided into four types. One is melanin, hemoglobin, hemocytarin and carotene. And second one is the exogenous pigmentation. The coming from the outside of the body, exogenous pigmentation is commonly due to the foreign body implanted into the oral mucosa. It, in the exogenous pigmentation is very common in the day-to-day -day dental practice. These are all the example of the exogenous, endogenous pigmentation. So, RBC, in the red in color. The melanin is the most important pigmentation in the endogenous pigmentation. The human beings come in the glorious spectrum of the different colors. Different color types of the colors of the skin, hair, eyes are varies in the person to person it will vary. First, melanin, the most important endogenous factor is the melanin pigmentation. The melanin producing cells is called melanocytes. That's a specific cells is a melanocyte that will produce the melanin. That process the melanin form from the melanocytes is called melanosomes. Here there is a octopus like cells is called melanocytes. In the center nucleus the melanin is produced and the tentacles the hand like appearance is the called tentacles. The produced melanin is go to the superficial through the, the tentacles. That is the melanin. Each melanocytes, see that in this picture, the melanocytes embedded in the basement membrane. Each basement membrane uh, melanocytes connected to the 30 to 40 surrounding keratinocytes. The ones the melanin is produced in the nucleus, so melanin is produced and transferred to the superficial keratinocytes. 1 is to 36 is the ratio of melanocytes is keratocyte. Here, this is this picture, it will explain in detail. Then go for the oral pigmented lesions classification. This is the one of the most important classification of the pigmented lesions of the oral cavity. In this classification, it divided into two, two main categories. First one is the diffused and bilateral. There is a diffused both the sides, right and left side, bilateral is present, but it is not a specific, it is a diffused all over the oral cavity. Second one is focal, specifically it is present in the only one area. In the diffused bilateral, further divided into two. Early onset and adult onset. Early onset means from the birth. It the pigmentation present from the birth. In this condition, the physiological pigmentation and Petzger syndrome is under category of the early onset. Adult onset onset is further divided into two types. With the systemic signs and symptoms, without signs and symptoms. With signs and symptoms, the Addison's disease, heavy metal pigmentation, Kaposi sarcoma. And without sign and symptoms, drug induced pigmentation post-inflammatory pigmentation and smoker's melanosis. So, these are all the diffused bilateral pigmental lesions. In the focal, coming to the focal, it is further divided into three categories. First one is the red, blue, purple and blue-gray lesions and brown color lesions. In the red, blue, purple, blanching lesions are hemangioma and varix, non-blanching lesions thrombus and hematoma. In the blue-gray lesions, amalgam tattoo and foreign body tattoos, blue nevice. The brown color lesions is melanotic macule, pigmented nevus, melanoacanthoma and melanoma. These are all the 
classifications of the pigmented lesions. First go to the red, blue, purple lesions. In this category, first we will go to see the hemangioma. The hemangioma is a benign tumor of blood vessels that may be congenital or traumatic in origin. The total of 73 percentage of hemangiomas occurs within the first year of the life. Then clinical features, signs the earliest sign of the hemangioma is the blanching of the involved skin. The blanching is the initial sign. The dyscopy is a one of the investigation procedure for the hemangioma. Dyscopy usually shows blanching on the pressure. The procedure is performed by a pressing gently on the lesion with a glass slide in the glass or glass test tube. In the glass slide, the positive dyscopy indicates that blood within the vascular spaces and is displaced out of the lesions by pressure. If what is it says, it the uh, apply with the pressure with the glass slide, the red color disappeared. Then we will remove the glass slab, will bit again will appear. That is the investigation procedure for hemangioma. That is called dioscopic procedure. It is one of the important diagnostic procedure. This is a sample examples of the hemangioma, hemangioma of the tongue in the young, young child, the hemangioma. Then comes under the hematoma. The hematoma is a pool of effused blood confined within the tissue. When it is superficial, it appears as a elevated bluish swelling in the mucosa. The hematoma is usually self-limiting in size. It will uh, disappear after a few days or a week. It is a hematoma. It is a sample picture of the hematoma. Then some of the basic terminologies. One is petechiae, purpura and echemosis. Before that, we, have, we should know about the, these categories, these uh, terminologies, what it uh, means. Petechiae is small pinpoint hematomas less than 3 millimeter diameter. See that? The small pinpoint hematoma. This is a petechiae. Purpura is a blue is about 1 centimeter diameter, generally round in shape is purpura. It is larger than the petechiae. Petechiae is less than 3 millimeter, purpura is the about 1 centimeter. Echemosis is the larger lesion, subcutaneous extravasation of the blood in the thin layer under the skin. See that it, it is over the 1 centimeter diameter, it is a echemosis, it is the larger one. So size wise, first smallest is the petechiae, then purpura, then echemosis. Then coming to the blue gray lesions. Under the blue gray lesions, first you are going to see the amalgam tattoo. The amalgam material is generally commonly used in our field in dentistry. So it is a very common. The characterized by the deposit of the restorative debris, compound of the mixture of the silver, mercury, tin, zinc and copper in sub-epithelial connective tissue. The etiology for the amalgam tattoo is a restorative work in the endodontics, removal of the old fillings during extraction and retrograde amalgam filling. Retrograde means apically the filling the teeth. That is the retrograde filling. These conditions are etiology for the amalgam tattoo. See the example samples of the picture amalgam tattoo. In this picture, there is a silver amalgam filling seen in the molar region. In the adjacent mucosa, there is a brown color lesion. That is the amalgam tattoo. The amalgam contained within the filling that goes to the subepithelium, it produces the this color. Here, this two teeth, the central incisors are the root canal treated teeth, epistectomy, the retrograde filling, the exactly in the apical area, there is a two blue, blue color lesion, the tattoo, that is called amalgam tattoo, it is exactly present in the apical area. During the retrograde filling, it will happen. Then blue nevice, the blue nevice represent a localized proliferation of dermal metallocytes. Clinical features, the site is that it occurs chiefly in the buttocks, on the dorsum of the feet and hands on the face and the color is varies from the brown to bluish in color. The management is the surgical excision is the, the simplest method. Then go for the brown color lesions. The so far the finish the red blue purple lesions and blue gray lesions over. So go for brown color lesions. In the brown color lesions the melanotic macule, pigmented nevice, melanocanthoma and melanoma. The pigmented nevice, it is a congenital or acquired benign tumor of the melanocytes. These are the four types. It is intramucosal, junctional and compound and blue nevice. These are all the four types of the pigmented nevice. So first, what is the intramucosal nevice? The nevus cells completely lose their association with the epithelial layer and become confined in the submucosal tissue. Intramucosal, in the submucosal tissue, it occurs the, in the submucosal tissue. The junctional device. The nevus cells initially maintain their localization 
to the junction of the epithelium and base membrane in present in the in between the epithelium and base membrane that previous one the intramucosal nevus is present within the epithelium but in the junctional nevus in between the epithelium and base membrane and compound the clust clustered melanocytes are thought to proliferate down into the connective tissue it below the connective tissue the common device is present and below the connective tissue see like this this is the sample of the common device see that in this picture intramucosal is within the epithelial layer junctional epithelium in between the uh, epithelium and base membrane the common device is a present in the in below the connective tissue blue nevus also present in below the connective tissue and coming to the melanoma it's a important question the melanoma is an malignant tumor of the comprising melanocytes is a malignant tumor malignant melanoma is the least common but most deadly of all primary skin cancer it's a very aggressive tumor malignant melanoma is the least common but most deadly of all primary skin cancers the unusual anatomic locations in which they occur they are easily mistaken for other diseases in for more common conditions and because of the lack of the early signs and symptoms usually the signs and symptoms uh, shows is very late st later stage only so in early stage there is no signs and symptoms so lack of the early signs and symptoms mucosal melanoma are always diagnosed as a advanced stages the most common oral cavity sites are palate and maxillary gingiva heart palate and maxillary gingiva is the most common site in the oral cavity so etiology of the malignant melanoma ethnicity and sun exposure appears to play a major role in the development of cutaneous melanoma ultraviolet light is believed to be the most important factor during the sun exposure the sunlight uv rays is the main etiology for the malignant melanoma the mucosal melanoma on the other hand there is no association with sun exposure cigarette smoking denture irritation and alcohol are some of the risk factors so uh, mucosal melanoma is not due to the sun exposure okay there is a phase there is a two phase it's a radical growth phase when horizontally spreading into the tumor vertical growth growth phase is the tumor invading to the deeper structure the vertical growth phase begins when the neoplastic cells populate the underlying dermis in these lesions the malignant melanocytes tend to spread in the vertically through the base layer of the epidermis vertical growth phase and horizontal growth phase so clinico pathological types of melanoma is a four types superficial spreading melanoma nodular melanoma lentigo maligna melanoma acral lentiginous melanoma these are the four clinico pathological types oral manifestations what are the oral manifestations of the oral melanoma oral melanoma exhibits definite predilection for the palate and maxillary gingiva this is a more common sight heart palate and maxillary gingiva the color and appearance in the oral lesions typically begins as a brown to black macule with irregular borders the macule extends laterally and lobulated exophytic mass develops once the vertical growth is initiated it is a color is a very peculiar color the brown to black in color sometimes lobulated or exophytic mass is present okay is the common site is palate and maxillary gingiva the signs ulceration may be developed early but many lesions are dark lobulated exophytic mass without ulceration at the time of the diagnosis the color is the first main point the rules in this uh, malignant melanoma there is a clinical feature according to the clinical feature there is a rule a b c d e rule the a means asymmetry one half of the unlike the uh, asymmetry symmetrical in the lesion is asymmetry the border border is very irregular scalloped and the poorly defined border color color is a most important point the brown to black in color the diameter diameter is more greater than a 6 mm there is a larger in diameter and then e means evolving the mole or skin lesions that looks different from the rest of rest or the changing the size and shape or color first beginning with a some small mole then evolving to the uh, melanoma these are all the a b c d e rule asymmetry border color diameter and evolving this is the according to the clinical feature so coming to the staging of the malignant melanoma determination of the melanoma stage is important for the planning of the treatment treatment plan the important for the treatment planning we are going to stage there is a two types of staging there is a clars level and brislow depth there is a two type the prognosis of cutaneous melanoma is based on clars level of tumor invasion related to the layers of the skin is interested here this is a clars level so clars level 1 2 3 4 5 
there is a five levels are there initially the depends on the vertical growth the initially the growth is very superficial then going to deep deep very deeper the depth is the first within the 1 milli 1 to 0 to 1 millimeter 1 to 2 millimeter 2 to 3 millimeter 3 to 4 4 to 5 the class of 5 is the more than 4 to 5 millimeter depth according to the depth this clock is a classified then treatment for the malignant melanoma four types of standard treatment are used one is surgery chemotherapy radiation therapy and biological therapy the new types of treatment are being tested in the clinical trials chemo immunotherapy targeted therapy and vaccine therapy so then comes the diffuse and bilateral so far the focal lesions is over in the diffuse and bilateral category first coming to the physiological pigmentation this is not a pathological condition this is only the pigment uh, physiological condition oral physiological pigmentary lesions are usually caused by increased amount of the malignant deposition it is defined as the localized symmetric hyperpigmentation which is commonly seen in the attached gingiva we all seen in the some of the some persons having the gingiva is a darker color gingiva that is in the physiological condition no treatment needed that's not a pathological condition the melanosis is associated with the systemic diseases some of the color melanin uh, related lesions associated with the systemic diseases what are they the addison's disease first one is the addison's disease it is also called as chronic adrenaline insufficiency addison's disease is a hormonal disorder resulting from a severe or total deficiency of hormones made in the adrenal cortex it will create the pigmentation brown heme associated lesions brown heme associated lesions is chemosis and purpura petechiae hemochromatosis and keratonemia jaundice and hematoma these are all the brown heme related pigmented lesions so coming to the jaundice jaundice you all know that the yellow or green color discoloration of the skin and the mucous membrane with pile pigments oral mucus are present a yellowish discoloration and the tongue is heavily coated then coming to the kaposi sarcoma kaposi sarcoma is a cancer that develops from the cells that line lymph or blood vessels it is a neoplasm of vascular endothelial origin in the blood vessels inside the layer of the blood vessels is called endothelium endothelium means inside the blood vessels that wall of the blood vessels this neoplasm origin within the inside the blood uh, endothelium it will arise the kaposi sarcoma see the common site is the palate common site etiology of the kaposi sarcoma is caused by herpes virus also known as a human herpes virus 8 it is a mainly most important thing is it is all associated with the patient with aids in the head and neck area is very common the kaposi sarcoma associated with the hiv patients melanosis associated with the genetic disorders there is a two genetic disorders as associated with the malignant pigment pigmented lesions petzeger syndrome and kaffeite pigmentation see the petzeger syndrome it is an autosomal dominant disorder featuring gastrointestinal polyp and the pigmented macula on the lip and the skin see the examples of the petzeger syndrome syndrome is associated with the more conditions kaffeite pigmentation solitary idiopathic kaffeite spots are occasionally observed in the general population McEwen Albright syndrome, Nonan syndrome also there in the McEwen Albright syndrome. See that example, the pigmentation, coffee like spots, the brown color lesion. Then coming to the drug induced pigmentation, the number of medications, many drugs, many drugs is caused by the mucosal pigmentation. For example, some of the drugs, so bleomycin, chloroquine and ketoconazole, these are all the important drugs, quinine. These are the drugs that cause to uh, induce the uh, pigmentation, drug induced pigmentation. And then post inflammatory pigmentation, long standing inflammatory mucosal lesions, particularly lichen planus can cause the mucosal pigmentation. In the lichen planus is the autoimmune disorder, it occurs the buccal mucosa. In the healing stage, it will create the pigmentation. See in this a picture, it is a healing stage, it will create the, we can try a, is healing that will create the pigmentation and then coming to the smoker's melanosis. Smoker's melanosis, the name itself indicated that will arising characterized by the smoker's patients. The smoker's melanosis tobacco users and it is characterized by multiple brown color macules that usually involving the attached mandibular gingiva 
on the label side palette and buccal mucosa here uh, there is a gray color pigmentation seen in the oral cavity in specifically buccal mucosa label mucosa and palate in the smoking patients it will occurs that is called smoker's melanosis the smoker's melanosis condition is actually irreversible if the uh, patient is stop the smoking habit it will reversible it will go back to the normal stage it will continue it's one of the pre malignant condition it will uh, is not continue it will continue it go for the cancer the smoker's melanosis gray color pigmentation in the all over the oral cavity thank you thank you for watching my listening my class thank you